What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode four of the Creator Series on the Proven Knowledge Podcast. This week, we kind of did a detour. I know last week I said Maley would be on. We are pushing that interview to next week, the final week of June. Um, This week, we did kind of a segue episode with a South Carolina artist named Young Cub. He is from Spartanville, I believe. I could be wrong about that. Might have to look that up again. Spartanville, South Carolina. And me and him talked about how his, how important his crew has been to him so far in his career. Uh, if he would ever sign to a major label. And we talked about uh, what hobbies he has other than music to kind of take his creativity to another level. Uh, it was a very inspiring conversation in all honesty. Uh, I know he's a pretty young kid, but I feel like... The listeners are going to learn a lot from this episode. There was a lot of things that really gave me goosebumps, in all honesty, that he was talking about. And I can tell his career is definitely headed in the right direction. So, without further ado, let's get into the episode today. Uh, Welcome, everyone, to episode four of the Creator Series of the Proven Knowledge Podcast. Today uh, is kind of a segue episode to another episode we're going to do next week, but today we have a South Carolina uh, hip-hop artist who goes by the name of Young Cub. How you doing, man? Doing good. Awesome. Uh, so we basically start every episode with kind of tell everybody about a little bit about yourself, like your name, uh, where you're from, all that good stuff, and kind of tell everyone why you got into music in the first place. All right. Before we get into, get into that, I want to... Uh... Give a shout out to my my whole friend of Julian. He he raps with me. Go by DJ Roller, and also a shout out to my producer. He got my attention. We will awesome. always work together no matter what. Do do what I gotta do it to the fullest. So I'm gonna get thanks to them. Awesome, bro. But uh, I'm from uh, Spartanburg, South Carolina. Been here all my life. Uh, music wise, I started making music when I was 12. I have a full story about that. Start off, man, me and my little brother, you know, we do what little brothers do. I was fighting and everything. My mama had this little drum pad. She teach me how to play drums. They played beats. And so um, one day she t- took, I was on punishment. She took the TV. Then she took my um, mass figures, everything. She bought, she looked at my drum pad, thinking about taking it, and she just left it. When she left, I just turned it on, heard a beat, grabbed a pencil, wrote my first song. When I wrote it, I had performed at the church two weeks later. Ever since then, I've been making music. The name Young Cub didn't come until 2016. Hmm. Every every day I write music, I get better at it, better at it. And right now, I'm just doing my best to blow up, take my family with me. Nice, bro. So the name's pretty new then. You've only had it for a few years. Okay. That's pretty dope. Um, As far as, like, I usually ask another question as a follow-up. As far as, like, your mental health right now and kind of, like, how you're doing personally uh how's that been going with everything happening in the world right now i know a lot of people are on uncertain times there's a lot of conflict there's a lot of uh, uncertainty and i kind of just wanted to ask how are you doing personally and just share whatever you feel comfortable sharing i mean i'm doing i'm doing great i mean i hate i hate how everything's happening Hmm. virus and everything but uh i know right now we gotta still keep in peace and understand uh, it's happened for a reason. Keep your faith in God and everything. I mean, I have my uh, my producer. He he's going through some things. You know, I got his back no matter what. He got my back. My friend over here he go through things. Everybody go through things, but no matter what, don't be alone. And if you alone, you gotta remember that like it's okay to be alone. Fight for your fight for yourself. But people will come around at the end of the day. You got bad people, good people. Mm-hmm. So no matter what you go through, you'll be all right. Yeah, man. I, I definitely feel like it's good to always have people around you, too, especially during, like, times like this, because, uh, you know, I know a lot of people suffer from depression, and they suffer from a lot of other things that kind of affect how they move on the day-to-day, so it's always good to have people around you that support you and, and whatever you're doing, so uh, that kind of transitions into my next question. You've been talking about your producer and everyone that's in your crew. Kind of uh, dissect the crew for me a little bit and go kind of deeper into... Uh, what they do for you specifically in your music and how you benefit from them and how they benefit from you. I mean, I mean, because to be told, 
every every like every song I write, it's gonna be always be about my past, my past, or what I see in the future, or sometimes how I feel that I know I don't want to do. Mm-hmm. And I I can't I can't do this alone without my crew. My crew is more than a crew; they they really family. Cause they we always got each other's back. So if I want so if I want a song to drop, cause I need to express my feelings. We gonna we gonna be on that song even if it takes all day to make it be right. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, after I rap, sing, I feel it so much better. And it's all because of them. That's super. That's super dope, man. Cause I know a lot of people, even when they have a crew, it might not be like people that they've known for a while, or it might be people that they only do music with. But like I said before, I think it's important to have the bond of actually like having a lot of. Um, I don't know, similarities and personality and things like that. Because I think you're able to, coming from personal experience, that's kind of how me and my friends do it. We're, we've been we've known each other for so long, I think it's easier to create music with each other because we just bond more in that way, I think. So that's definitely important. Yeah. You know, um, and you know, the thing about it is, it don't matter to be people you know for a long time either. Mm-hmm. I mean, it could be somebody you just met. Just met yeah. And it could be in the, at the mall. Restaurant, no matter what, you meet somebody, going to change your life. Mm-hmm. Totally agree, man. Um, as far as the writing process, like for your songs, how do you start that? Like, are you someone that can freestyle kind of off the top if you hear a beat? Or do you need to actually sit down every time and like write from um, the beginning? Like, how does that go for you? Um, It really, I mean, I can only really freestyle. Like, like I said, it's go by feelings. If I'm mad... So like I have a, I had a diss track I got a diss track that um, they released a couple months ago on somebody I I used to talk to and it started like I did it in school I was right trying to doing the song at first but I got so upset and everything and then the freestyling my whole uh, whole feelings because of that the whole school I was known as being a rapper known about, about the diss track so really it's just about feelings I can't just drop a beat and that's it I gotta go by feelings it got I gotta be hurt or something for me to do it. Like I said, mu- music, music can't be music without feelings and love. It's just, it can, music can't just be words; it's gotta be true. Exactly, so. man. Like I feel like a lot of people kind of take that for granted. Sometimes they think that uh, it doesn't always have to mean something. And I think like even like fun songs, like even songs that people don't put a lot of effort to. I think there's subconsciously like something in the back of like the artist's mind that is important that they're just trying to get off. It doesn't really matter how they say it or at the context but i think all music has some type of meaning even if we don't see it on like service level so that's kind of how i've always viewed it um what would you say who do you say are your inspirations as far as your music goes like who do you take any influences from who do you listen to a lot um honestly my dad Hmm. He, he always told me no matter what do what you can do because not everybody gonna be there I be there with you not to the fullest yeah, he, he know he, he knows me for a while I mean me and my dad we kind of just now trying to get our relationship better and everything because he haven't been around like that mm-hmm. but he he knows me very well everybody knows me very well like I said my my feelings really come out when it comes to music I, I mean you know like you know, somebody have to get angry they don't know how to punch a wall flip out or whatever don't, people don't know how to you know, express them feelings. But music was always the uh, the thing that helps me express my feelings no matter what I'm in. And he always told me, and especially when I call him, tell him, Dad, I'm angry, this happened, that happened, I'm so, I'm crying, this thing. He always tell me, sit down, put on paper, record it. Mm-hmm. So. I'd say that's always great advice because it's not, I'd say it's not as constructive to, like, get, so emotional to where you can't really do anything it's easier to just get them out like get the emotions out of your system like and through music i feel has always been like a great way to do it and if you're able to be good at music and i feel like that's always should be like your number one outlet so that's that's very good advice i think um let's continue with advice what do you think is the best career advice you've been given as far as how to kind of navigate through the music industry. I know you're an indie artist and you might not have been doing it for so long, but so far, what do you think is the best advice you've been given as far as how to navigate uh, through music so far? 
Easy. What my my um DJ Rilla told me, ten toes down, go all the way, don't quit. Mm-hmm. No matter what, it's gonna get hard, but don't quit. But once you quit it, you once you quit in something, don't quit in life later. But when you quit on, on something, you probably ain't gonna get that back. This this music thing is a God's given talent. You gonna you you quit on the God's given talent, he would not get that back. He would give it to somebody else. But not everybody get the right music. Not everybody can do that. Mm-hmm. Whatever, ever give, a kind of whatever you got is from God. Thank God for it. And do not quit on it. Work on it. Make it stronger. You gotta make it strong. Exactly. Um. Yeah, I know when people kind of ask me, younger people when they come to me and ask me like how I'm able to continue doing music and things like that. I, I haven't even been doing it for that long, but I just say, like, it's literally you have to make it an everyday thing. You can't just have one foot in the door and one foot out of the door. You have to have both feet in, and you have to have the confidence in yourself to be able to put yourself out creatively and not really care what anyone thinks as well. And you have to be able to put in the work to develop yourself into what you want to be. And that's not just, like, do it once a week or do it once a month. You really got to be in it every single day and just put your foot down, like you said, and just grind, grind, keep grinding. And even when it's hard, you got to just persevere through it. So yeah. I would definitely got, agree with that. We got so many artists out here still trying to do music. Mm-hmm. Got to keep going, though. Got to keep going. Yep. And, and, and saying, and saying uh, not quit, that's not even only just to music. That's a life in That's general. life, yep. Pretty much anything. It can apply to anything you do across the board, so... Yeah, because like, who knows who knows going to lead you. I mean, who knows what if five years from now, if I quit music today and I start had like some kind of time machine and some myself stuff five years from now, if I did quit music, I'll probably be famous. And that's really my goal. That's really my goal. And when I get when I get famous, I'm coming back for all my brothers, my, my hood brothers, my blood brothers, my family. That's how it goes. But the first person I gotta go to once I make it though, I'm going back to my my boys over here because they do, I'm going over here to record music. I'm making I'm over here trying to use their time when they can do anything right now. They can probably talk to some girls right now, mm-hmm. smoke weed or whatever they're trying to do. But today I come over, use their time to record music, and they thank thank them like I said. I'm thanking them now. I'm gonna do more than that. So whatever I, I make, it's going right to them. I can't do, you can't do nothing by yourself. It's hard. Exactly. And I, and I appreciate your kind of admiration for your crew as well, because that's super important. I know a lot of people, especially when they start getting bigger, they tend to forget about how they came up and all the people that kind of played a role in that. So that's super dope that that's how you feel about it. Um, do you have any dream collaborations as far as music goes? Like who would you ever want to do a feature with? Maybe like a bigger artist or even like someone smaller. It doesn't really matter. Um, the baby, little baby. Oh, okay. Um, T. Grizzly. Anyone else? Okay, well, I got one singer. Uh-huh. I'm gonna say Beyonce. I well, I know you want to do a song with Beyonce. That would be that would be great. I don't know, but I don't know what the budget would be for that song. That'd be <laughs> that'd be high as hell. You have to use use life savings on that one. I'm gonna need the whole, what's it called, uh, an employment check for that. <laughs> I'm gonna need an employment check for that one. Oh, that's dope though. Yeah, that would that that I think anybody would want a fe- Beyonce feature eventually. I mean, that's just that's top of the top right there though. Um, do you have any hobbies other than music that kind of help? I don't know, fuel your creativity, like or inspire you to write something in your music, like. Do you have any hobbies, like a sport or anything, that helps you kind of get away and just kind of recharge the batteries? Basketball, football. Hmm. Only reason why it comes to basketball, I get some, I can dunk on some motherfuckers and they can <laughs> be mad when they talk this shit. I'll be ready. Football, <laughs> I'm trucking everybody, man. I'm trucking everybody. I, I recently, what was it? Was it three years ago with Dan? Yeah. Um, I'm playing football, you know. I was already mad. And I was talking to my brother Julian about it. And he was like, man, just get on the field, man. And my brother did. I mean, he tried to run the ball. I just pushed his ass in the goddamn bushes. <laughs> oh, that's funny, dude. That's that's hilarious. Um, Okay, next question I wanted to get to here. What do you think, as far as financially, 
what do you struggle with uh, on the music side? Do you struggle with promotion, like self-promotion? Do you struggle with getting like album art or is there anything like recording yeah. expenses? What do you think it, has been a it's struggle? The, it's the uh, self-promotion. Oh, yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's dropping a song. Now y'all look I'm like, oh, man, I really hope some people listen to this. And then you, like I see the views, I get my music. I'm like, man, I want more, I want more, I want more. I think I, I think I deserve more to be honest. Mm. We, we deserve more. I mean, this this hard work. Writing the song is easy, but trying to make sure it sounds perfect, as good as it can be, that's hard. That's really, it's really hard. That means so many songs I wrote that I can never have it be right. And it's not because of the producer. It's not. It's just because I probably not fit for that. Just who? I mean, who knows? I know for me, like it's been a struggle as far as. I had to learn that you could pour your heart and your soul into all your creative work as far as music goes, but the whole like marketing side is a totally different animal. So it kind of like sucks to be like you're stuck in the music world, but you also need to learn the marketing world as well. And it's kind of finding the balance between the two to have a lot of success. And sometimes you try stuff like the self-promotion thing, for example, like what you were talking about. I think I've tried a lot of stuff where I've spent money and nothing happens. Like I get no response like you don't get the response you want and it kind of frustrates you when you don't get the feedback on something that you worked hard on but it's because like something with marketing didn't go the way you had planned so I know that's always like a frustrating thing for me and I know like even bigger artists as well like they struggle with the same thing but they just have more budget to work with so I think it's just about uh trial and error with that sort of thing but um, so you said you're from South Carolina, correct? Yeah. Uh, is there anyone in South Carolina, as far as hip hop goes, that you kind of look up to, or even like your peers, uh, that are kind of big? Like, what's the scene? What's the hip hop scene look like in South Carolina today? South Carolina, to be told, you don't really got that many artists in South Carolina. I mean. So far, truth be told, I could name a couple of them, but out of the couple of them, it's probably only a few that's actually pretty good. I mean, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna shout out the ones who was uh, terrible. Um, but we got DJ Roller, he's coming up. Tension, he's coming up. Slide the Goat, B23. That's the four I'm naming right there. Hmm. They coming up too. I have to, I have to be on the lookout for them. I will have to check out all their stuff then, because. I know, like, I know a lot of North Carolina, and I've actually talked to a couple of North Carolina artists so far already, and I know, like, the bigger artists, like, the Baby and J. Cole and stuff. So I, I wasn't really familiar with uh, South Carolina, uh, so that's definitely something I want to check out more, I think. Um, let's talk about your independence for a second. Um, how How is being independent so far for you, and would you ever see yourself maybe – doing the label thing eventually or do you think it's important to have your ownership of your music at all times and do you think you're going to be able to kind of control the path of your career that way or would you see yourself if the situation came that felt right do you think you would ever sign to a label I, 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 think I will be signed to a label hmm. on the minute I'll be signed to a label I'm telling my boys, the closest boys with me, pack your bags with me, we're going. And that's just, that's true. Cause taking my girl with me, my son with me, we all going. They family. I'm not, because to be told, I had people in my life who uh, went to places. I mean, probably not that, that big like this or anything, but mm-hmm. the places I wanted to go and leave behind. I know how that feels. And so I'm like, really, someone, thanks, someone love and everything. Like I said, they come with me. If I get signed right now, it could be with the baby, whoever. And then when they tell me, if they tell me, leave your producer, I'm telling them, no, it's mm-hmm. straight up. Leave your producer or you're not signed. Fine, I'm not getting signed, bro. I make it right. I did a lot of stuff in my life by myself anyways. Did a lot of uh, seated with uh, these two guys. So it's either us or not. Mm-hmm. This is how it is. Because I'm, I'm, with me, it's a full package. They come with the full package. I'm not. It's no, it's no open the package and take some stuff out. It's this ain't this ain't Burger King having your way type of stuff. No, it's gonna be Burger King. You gonna get the full 
um, full package. That's dope. Real. Yeah, that's dope, man. Yeah, I again, I think people kind of forget about the loyalty aspect of like everything, and they always just see what's right in front of them at all times, but they don't remember the journey and like how you got there, how you got to that point in time. So I think as long as you have that in mind, like I said, that's that's amazing because a lot of people don't have that, I don't think. So um, if you could go back 10 years ago and talk to yourself, and this could be in life in general, what do you think you'd tell yourself advice-wise? What do you think you would tell yourself about where you're headed? I would tell myself that I'm about to head to a hard life crisis. And you and I have people you thought would have your back. But be prepared to fight your battles. But you will win your battles. Just don't take it for granted, though. That's what I would tell myself. Hmm. Let's flip it then. If you could go 10 years in the future, where do you see yourself in music or just in life? Where do you want to be? On top. I want to be on top. If not, I can't be on top. That's number one. I'm going to be on top. If I got to be on top 25, as long as I'm up there, as long as I'm like real, real, real known, my name will get brought up every time. I want that to happen. That's always that's always uh, great to set the bar as high as possible, I think. I know a lot of people call people crazy for setting the bar high, but unless you set the bar high, I don't think you're ever going to achieve it regardless. So you have to think like that, I think, to achieve it. So You got setting a um, high goal like that. You got to be long-term because you're doing short-term. You got to figure out sit Now you got to sit down like, okay, what's next? I mean, if, if, hey, if, I, if I top this, this – um, in the short term matter, then hey, it's whatever. Yep. But hey, I mean, I got my team with me, so we all gonna figure things out. We all gonna think we're playing. Super dope, bro. Do you have any projects you're working on? Do you have an album? Do you have an EP? What do you What do you got? Yeah, look up? out for a little. EP. It may be EP, a mixtape album. We, we still working, like like about what's hot on the beat. But look out for No Regrets, produced by Tension, featuring my boy DJ Roller. It's gonna be some some hard shit. It's gonna it's gonna be hard. It's gonna be coming it, out. Is it coming out uh, this summer? You think? Yeah, it should either drop. I say the latest of uh, June, really. Probably okay. June. Okay. So really soon then. That's that, that's dope. You have to send me that because I want to hear it too. But, and where can the fans find you on social media? I know you're on Instagram. Are you on anything else? Oh, uh, give on Snapchat. You can Snapchat. Can't say Facebook because I don't remember my Facebook. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, and any final words of wisdom for the listeners today? Yes. Don't give up on your dreams. If you need help, go find your help. If you can't find help, do it yourself. You'll be stronger. You'll see yourself in the future. You will cry. You will cry. <laughs> but remember, first thing first, first thing first, thank God for this. They thank the people who helped you around you, even before, and they said one thing. Even the people who left you, thank you, thank them for leaving you, because it made you stronger at the end of the day. No matter what, do not quit. You have a future ahead of yourself. Don't quit, man. Don't quit. Well, Young Cub, thank you again. Like I said, I appreciate the loyalty you have to your crew, your friends, your family, all that stuff. And I wish you the best of luck headed forward. And I hope we can do this again soon, man. I appreciate you reaching out. I appreciate it, man. Thanks, everybody, for listening today. Like I said, next week we will be back with a London artist named Maley. I promise this time we'll get that episode out to you. Um, I hope everybody enjoyed this episode with Young Cub. Like I said, that was a very good conversation. I hope the listeners took a lot of great stuff from it. And you can run with that information. And until next week, we will see you then.